Hello and welcome. Welcome on into the webinar room. Uh, we are going to uh, wait for a couple minutes for everyone to join us so we can start with everyone at the same time. Uh, so while we are waiting, why don't you please check in in the chat over here, the chat bar on the right hand side of the webinar screen. Oh, Antoinette is very excited. Holiday fun. <laughs> <clears throat> Colette, hello. Very good to see you, Michael, or, or, or have you here, <laughs> Michael? Hello. Let me also know where you are logging in from. We like to see how far across the United States and the world that we can get. Hi, Simone from Vancouver. Michelle, hello. Um, it's so good to have you all here today uh, on uh, this holiday uh, special edition webinar that we are holding today. I am very excited about it. And I know that the people that I'm with here today are very excited as well. Here we go. Oh my God, they're rolling in now. Um, Heidi from Stuttgart, Germany. Whoa, there we go. We're officially out of the United States. Excellent. Michelle, Phoenix, Arizona. Pauline, Cape Town. Awesome. Barbara, New Jersey. David Chico. Rhonda from Emporia, Kansas. I was born in Kansas. Um, Maria. Uh, excellent. Ox oh, that's awesome. Uh, Jolanta, Carbondale, Illinois. And Ronnie from Germany as well. Oh, it's just it's going so fast. Apologize. Apologies. Lori from Southern oh, BC. Awesome. John, North Carolina. Iwana from Poland. Awesome. Uh, and Chris from the deepest UK. I like that. Um, excellent. Matthew from Montreal. Uh, Carolyn. Oh, Carolyn says she can't hear it. So, uh, okay. Uh, I'm going to type a quick little message here while we're con continuing to say hello, if you have audio or visual or, let's see, video issues. Please refresh your screen. It should help. Yes. So I know you can't hear me if you're if you can't if you're having audio issues, but if you're having audio issues, refreshing your screen should help or exiting and coming back in. Hi, Shannon from Reno. Um, oh, okay, yes. Yeah, Jocelyn, we uh, right now we don't have the 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 chat on public at the moment, so that's why I'm calling everybody's names. All right, and then uh, Katia is also, is from Geneva, Switzerland, and then uh, Kathy from Cape Charles, Virginia. Oh, it is a beautiful day here as well, Kathy, and we are in Washington, um, and we have one person, Janelle, and you are not. Are you in Idaho? Or are you in some place? Are you in some place else right now? I'm in Idaho right now. Yep. Well, oh, you are in Idaho. Okay. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. All right. So let's see. We it's eleven oh three. I think we can roll it up. Hi, Nicole from Oregon. Um, all right. So I think we can go ahead and get started. Welcome everybody into the room. People will start to we'll we'll, we'll continue to, to filter in. Uh, I would um, like to introduce Janelle Connell and Hillary Kaiser. They are part of our clinical nutrition team, and we have a newcomer to the clinical nutrition team who is joining us here, and we're so happy about it. Gabrielle Kim, hello, ladies. Say hello to everybody. Hi, Hi everyone. Hello, everyone. Welcome. It's good to see people from all over the world. That's so exciting. I know. It's really, really, really awesome. Really cool. I love it. The, the um, beauty of the internet, that is for sure. <laughs> all right. And so we are here to give you the ultimate holiday survival guide. And, uh, and let me tell you, the holidays are here, right? They are, they are, they definitely are here. And um, these three are here to set you up so you can have all the joy, fun, family parties and food during the holidays and none of the, well, you know, hopefully <laughs> none of these side effects. Uh, you know, so like, I'd like to take the temperature in the room really quickly before we start with a couple of polls. So over here on the right, you'll see the polls come up. And the first question is, do you find it difficult to stick to your healthy routines during the holidays? You can answer right here uh, in that uh, sidebar. And the second question is, what gets abandoned first? Is it healthy eating? Is it sleep? Is it exercise? Is it supplements? Is it making sure I get moments to de-stress? What goes first? 
All right, we'll just wait like a few more seconds for everybody who would like to answer to answer the poll. And this is what we're talking about today. We're talking about setting yourself up so you don't necessarily need to experience these things. So it looks like, yes, most of us, um, uh, 73% now find it difficult to stick to their healthy routines through the holidays. And that's why you're here. Excellent. But some people don't. Well done. Awesome. We want to get tips from you, you know? So, all right. And then looks like most people are experiencing uh Healthy eating goes out the window first, right? 52%. And then after that exercise, and then close uh, third, fourth, and fifth is sleep supplements and making sure I get moments to de-stress. All right. So um, excellent. Uh, thank you for answering those polls. And that's a good way to like just kind of set us off. Um, for the the first thing, and apologies, I completely forgot to show the pictures of everybody with your names and titles. Uh, so there we go. We have Janelle Connell, Hillary Kaiser, and Gabrielle Kim, and we are ready to start off. And I know the first person who is going to speak first, and that's Janelle, right? Yeah, I'll jump in right. here. Um, I I like seeing that poll. That's super interesting. I think I align pretty much where the majority aligned there. Right? It's uh, it's healthy eating is hard during the holidays, especially when you have a lot of parties and events going on. Um, and, and I find that routine is more challenging. You're staying out later, you're running from here to there. So we're definitely going to touch upon some of those aspects today, which is great. Um, but before we do, I want to kind of dive in a little bit to, I, I think what some of the root problems are during the holidays and why we struggle with sticking to those routines. Um, we'll show a couple of stats here. This is from Sleepopolis. Um, so similar to what we found today, 66% of people said that uh, they feel more stressed during the holidays. So the majority of people feel more stressed. Uh, but what I think is interesting is these top reasons for that stress. And uh, all of them, I think, can touch upon our healthy habits or eating habits. But I'm really interested in this 18% that said disrupted routines. And we pulled on that as well. Um, disrupted routines throw us off of our normal habits, right? And our body needs those like checkpoints throughout the day of what is normal, what grounds us, what sets us on course for the, the remainder of the day. Um, so we'll talk about getting into some good routines. Um, I'll throw in, we don't have them up on the slide, but sleep has some pretty interesting stats as well. Um, about 56% of people said they're sleeping six hours or less during the holiday. And actually a chunk of those almost 20% said between three to five hours. Um, that is significant, right? Only three to five hours of sleep. Um, that is going to be a catalyst, right? The, the greatest factor that was reported for loss of sleep was holiday stress. So we're in this we're in this loop here. We feel stressed. We don't sleep as well. We don't sleep as well. We don't eat as well. It's it's a really um, tough tough cycle to break. And that's where we want to talk about some of our strategies that we use today and and how we uh, can stay on track. All right, I'm going to switch over here. All right, so. What is happening when we are not sleeping as much, when we have more stress during this holiday, um, it's impacting our microbiome. It's also impacting our brain and our decision making. And what's really interesting is these two things are directly connected. So we have what's called the gut brain access. That's what we call it. And that is when our, our gut is constantly communicating with our brain and vice versa. Um, think about when you've been like nervous for something, you have a big presentation or something coming up and you get those butterflies in your stomach. Um, or sometimes people get like, uh, you know, constipation or diarrhea when they have something big coming up. That is that communication between your brain and your gut. And actually our gut sends more information to our brain than the other way around. So caring for our gut is so important when we, when it comes to managing stress during the holidays. Um, so I talked about when we're highly stressed, it, uh, it impacts our motility. It also changes the permeability of our gut. So 
Uh, we call this leaky gut. You guys have probably heard of that, especially our, our biomers here that follow us. But um, that's where we get little little gaps within the lining of, uh, of our gut. And when we're highly stressed, those gaps widen, things can get through. So then metabolites and things that promote inflammation, um, microbes, all of those things that might trigger our immune response can happen more often. We might get more sick during that time. Um, we also, with a lot of stress and lack of sleep, get shifts in just the balance of our gut microbes. So we see overgrowth in potentially harmful microbes, right? We also see a change in what those microbes are doing. So their metabolism. Um, one interesting one is like the way we process our carbohydrates. So our microbes ferment those carbs, right? And they produce beneficial short chain fatty acids. Um, but when we're stressed, it disrupts that process. So we may not be getting as much of those beneficial metabolites that help us uh, improve our gut lining, help us manage our blood sugar, our appetite, all of those helpful metabolites that, that come from um, our gut microbes. So sleep is really similar. A lot of those same kind of issues, whether it's stress or sleep, that impacts our gut. And remember, the way our gut is responding impacts our decision making impacts our, our mental health, our clarity, all of those things during the holidays. All right, so another little fun stat. These are, these are all from the same uh, survey. Said 79% of people report that they follow a less strict diet. I think we saw that in our poll too. We said healthy eating was probably like the number one challenge. And 26% of people reported increased sweet intake. I actually would say that's probably higher, um, but but definitely a challenge. Back to bringing it to the gut again. When we're when we're changing what we eat, when we're stressed, when we're when we are have a lack of sleep, um, it changes the metabolites that our gut microbiome makes, and that's even things like um, ghrelin or GLP one, which has been really um, in the news a lot. The, those are, you know, hormones that help us um, control our appetite or make us feel hungry either way. And uh, we see, you know, an increase in hunger as we feel stressed or as we're eating more sweets and our microbiome responds to that. Those, those types of things can happen. Um, they added, I think it's a, maybe a different study, but they looked at people who are sleep deprived and they're actually unable to resist highly palatable foods. So junk foods, sweet foods, salty foods, it is almost impossible to resist when we're tired. Um, so finding those moments where we can kind of ground ourselves, those routines that we're gonna talk about later, so, so important during this holiday time. Okay, so I, I've talked a lot about, you know, our microbes, are influencing a lot of our, our health during this time of the year. Um, are we really in charge? We have, um, we're not always, is the truth. We're not always in charge. Our brain loves to seek out reward, right? So the same part of our brain that um, gets excited when we get money or the same part of the brain that's triggered when someone takes drugs, um, it also responds to chocolate. It responds to sweets. It likes those rewards. Um, there's a, uh, I guess he's a behavioral psychologist. His name's uh, Richard Peterson. And he advises people to pay really close attention to feelings of excitement. And because these are the times when we seek reward. And I can't think of a more exciting time, at least for me, than the holidays, right? It's full of excitement. Um, there's things you're looking forward to, there might, there's gifts, there's, there's parties, there's social things, right? There's a lot of excitement. But that's also when impulsive behavior is more likely to happen. Um, so it's not that we don't want those things. Um, we're going to talk about some strategies to, to manage those moments and uh, kind of recenter your focus uh, as we move, move through today. I think, uh, Gabby, I'll let you jump in here and talk a little bit about how our environment is is uh, driving these maybe unconscious behaviors. 
Yeah, so our environment plays a big role in shaping and influencing our mood, our behavior, and our decision uh, making process. Um, for instance, like if you think about like walking into like a dark, um, stuffy, you know, cluttered room, how you feel versus how you would feel walking into a room that's like bright, clean, airy, you know, spacious. It's it's quite different, you know. Um, that that just initial step that has a different impact on you. Um, or if you were to walk into a room that has, you know, a spread of like donuts, chip, you know, different snacks, um, you're more likely to go and grab um, a plate, um, even though you may not be hungry or you weren't thinking about it. But if it's just there, you know, you're more likely to do that. And so um, these environmental um, or our environment, you know, it has a big impact on us, whether we're aware of it, whether we like it or, you know, or not, but it does make a big difference on um, our mood and um, our decisions. And our environment can include um, distractions like, you know, like our phone or what's around us, resources, what's available, um, people, sometimes like peer pressure <laughs> or like social events, um, but also temperature and seasonal as well too. So like the holidays, um, that time of year, it's our schedule is quite different. Our routine is quite different than, you know, our usual routine in different times of the year. And so there are a lot of challenging environment, you know, that comes up during the holidays, um, which can also be like traveling that can impact, you know, our stress levels, our diet, sleep, um, crowded spaces um, that can also impact stress and um, even just different germs and bacteria that we're exposed to. Um, and just our sleep schedule and um, different people that we're with. So um, our, our, what's around us makes a big difference. Um, but that doesn't mean that we're completely powerless against it. You know, there's things that we can do um, to, um, you know, be more conscious and mindful about um, our decisions. Um, so we have some tips here for you guys going in. Um, so some tips to manage some of our cues. Um, so what? Oh, sorry about that, guys. Um, so what can we do? So um, I guess to be more conscious about it, you know. Um, first, I would you know recommend thinking about what are your non-negotiables this holiday season. What are your biggest values, your goals that you want to stick with? Um, is it sleep? Is it your diet? You know. Um, and then think about your triggers that may potentially come up. Are you sensitive to traveling? Um, you know, does that usually impact the way you eat? Um, you know, are you sensitive to where you're sleeping? And what can you do to get plan for success? Give your best yourself the best you know outcome. Um, if it's sleep, you know, maybe carry an eye mask if it's food or your diet, carry some snacks with you, um, plan ahead. Um, and then if it is um, you're going to somewhere that you're comfortable with, like a family member's house or um, friends gathering, then, you know, it's it's okay to communicate your, your goals and your, you know, what you're working on with them. Um, if you're comfortable, that's great. You know, um, you can... It's good to set boundaries, you know, be kind, and, but communicate clearly about what your goals and boundaries are. That's perfectly okay to do um, because, you know, you have to, there's times where you have to put yourself first and your health is really important. Um, and then lean on your support system. You know, if you do have a close friend um, or family member that you can ask to keep you accountable, um, you know, just let them know like, hey, this is a struggle. Um, you know, I want to, I want, I'm really working on this. Like, can you just you know, keep me in check or, you know, go for a walk with me or, you know, um, let's bake something that, you know, is a little bit, ha that has a little bit less sugar or something like that. And then um, at the same time, if, you know, if you do slip up, you know, if, there's, if you do have an extra uh, slice of pie or something like that, um, you know, of course, be kind to yourself. Um, don't, you know, um, hold on to that guilt, you know, just keep moving forward and keep, you know, going on with your, your goals and yeah. And Gabby, I, th I think what I'm hearing too, is you're saying like 
creating more awareness, right? So as we think about it, now is a great time to think about it before we get into next week and then exactly. into December. We kind of think about what are my goals and what's most important to me because mm-hmm. I might not be able to maintain all of my routines, but maybe there are a few things that I really need to hold on to to feel my best. Like I know for me, like uh, protecting sleep is so important. I feel like that is the cascade that leads to uh, getting sick, like getting a cold, and then I get a cold, and then I'm not eating normally, and I'm not exercising, right? It's just that thing that that triggers it all. So finding those few things that that uh, are most important to you and committing and, and strategizing how you can maintain those during the holidays is important. Exactly, yeah. And when you say like protect your routine, that's perfect because that's what we're going to kind of go into next. Um, our brains, you know, it has a natural tendency to rely on routines and habits. Um, it helps with our brain's efficiency. It conserves energy. Um, it offers some stability and predictability to our brains. Um, if you think about it, if you had to make decisions and think about every task that you do on an everyday basis, like for instance, you know, like brushing your teeth, locking your doors, it's pretty exhaust, you know, it would be exhausting to your brain. Thankfully, your brain is, you know, smart enough to kind of streamline those um, smaller tasks and you kind of go on autopilot. So it leaves room um, to, you know, think about like the bigger decisions and, um, and so you want to protect some of those habits that you've worked, you know, I don't know, maybe several months, on, you know, on, so that you, you kind of keep going. Um, and so, um, like, whether it's, you know, avoiding some, you know, different foods or drinking water, things like that. So trying to protect some of those important habits and routines um, is really important. But not just that, it's also, like you said earlier, um, Janelle, that your gut microbiome is constantly communicating with the rest of your body and even your circadian rhythm, your body's internal clock. Um, So they're kind of working together to keep things in harmony, um, whether it's your, you know, digesting food, your hormones, stress levels, um, and things like that. So when those, that kind of goes out of balance, um, it can also be harder to, you know, get quality sleep. Um, it can impact your stress levels, which can also impact your um, decision making. So um, you just want to make sure you you protect some, you know, the simple routines that you can. Yeah. And these routines can kind of be like, they can be that touch point in your day, right? Maybe, maybe you always take your supplements in the morning, or for me, it's exercise in the morning. Um, it's that moment to like, just bring that, uh, I talked about the excitement, right? When we feel all the excitement, we're more likely to make impulsive decisions, but, or, you know, whether it's meditation, whatever it might be, if you can hold on to a couple of those routines, it lets your brain know like, hey, this is familiar. I do this all the time. It's, it's okay, right? And you can, you can kind of uh, recenter that way. Exactly. And I think Hillary is going to talk about some, some of that too in a bit. So I'll let you go. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I wanted to pick out a few elements of a healthy routine that I think will be most impactful during this holiday season to help shape your mindset, kind of mitigate some of the stresses, help you sleep better, and talk about some of the science around them. Because sometimes when we kind of understand the why, it helps us implement them a little bit better. Um, So first and foremost, take your supplements Um, Janelle mentioned earlier, um, when we're not sleeping well, we're stressed out, we're making poor diet nutrition, nutrition, um, uh, choices, it can affect our microbiome. It can make us eat more. Um, so with your Viome results, you get pre and probiotic supplement recommendations. We make, try to make it super easy. It's an easy little stick pack, mix it with some water. Um, these pre and probiotics are going to be really helpful for you to support your microbiome. Um, and just as an example, these holiday foods, they're generally higher in fat, sugar, salt, and lower in fiber, which kind of makes us feel a little bit hungrier and want to eat more. Um, so the, those prebiotics in there, the fibers, um, they work by kind of bulking up the contents of our digestive tract. And that bulking can help us feel more full and that'll help us eat less, perhaps maybe um, help us not take that extra cookie or whatever it might be that's so tempting. 
Um, the probiotics in there are also going to help support the diversity of the gut, which goes down as we're not exercising, we're um, making unhealthy food choices. Um, and the probiotics are also going to help support your regularity. If you're traveling a lot, that kind of gets thrown out of balance. If you're making different choices with your food, that's going to help support your regularity. Um, and probiotics, of course, help support your immune response, which I think Janelle is going to talk about a little bit more later. Um, now, I know it can be difficult to stay on track with your supplements. I know some of you said it's, it's difficult during the holidays. I know that's one of the first things that goes for me. Um, when I'm off my routine. So I wanted to share one of my tips for helping you uh, remember to take your supplements and stay on track. So for me, what I do is I put my box of Viome supplements on my counter nearby my blender so that in the morning when I go to make my morning smoothie, that's part of my routine, uh, I see my supplements. So if you can put them someplace, you'll see them at the time you need to take them then that's going to help give you that cue to remember to take them. And I, I saw in the chat, somebody was asking, when is the best time of day to take them? Um, so we want you to take your pre and probiotics with food and, and your um, capsules too. So um, generally that means um, morning breakfast. Uh, if you're taking uh, four and four, right, there's eight capsules. Maybe you take some at breakfast and then some at lunch. Um, so taking them with food is just going to help with the tolerability. So I hope that helps you. I think it was Colette. All right. Um, movement. Okay. This is a huge one. I know um, you think about movement to help and exercise to help build your muscles, but actually exercise is a natural stress reliever by um putting your body in a little bit of stress, right? When you exercise, you move, you're, you're breathing heavier, your heart rate goes up, your blood pressure increases, your cortisol spikes. Um, you are just giving a little bit of stress to your body um, and exciting the nervous system just enough to train it to endure small amounts of stress later in the future. So getting in that movement is gonna be really key during the holidays, um, even helps with your glucose response if you do maybe a light walk after your meal. So see if you can get that movement in. It doesn't have to be, you know, at the gym, on the treadmill, lifting weights. If that's what you like to do, perfect. But the key is to make it fun and find something that you love. Um, and if you're uh, with your friends and family during the holidays, involve them too. Uh, maybe if you're at a gathering, you do some yard games if the weather permits, or uh, I don't know, a dance party, charades, anything that gets you moving that's fun. Um, you're all going to benefit from that. Um, I know it's also a good time to rekindle relationships during the holiday. So maybe instead of that lunch or that coffee date, you propose meeting up for a hike or a walk. It's just some ideas. All right, meditation. I know some people get a little um, nervous when they hear the word meditation. Of course, it's not for everyone, but what I wanted to get at here with meditation is that it's just time to deconnect. It's time to um, be present with yourself. So it doesn't necessarily have to mean, you know, sitting there for an hour um, breathing and being alone with your thoughts. It might mean just listening to some nice relaxing music, um, taking a walk, some artistic expression like painting or singing. It's just some time to disengage from your outside distractions to be present with yourself and with the sensations in your body. Um, this time of meditation really helps cultivate resilience within us um, so that we can better respond to stress with better clarity, with equanimity. Um, and just when the challenging times come up, we are present and we can deal with it more effectively. All right, accountability. So we mentioned this earlier, but there is a lot of science that shows that having an accountability buddy is going to give you much better results. Um, staying healthy on your own can be difficult, but uh, the research has shown um, it, there was a study, I think it was about 3,000, 4,000 couples. So um, they had enrolled them in a weight loss routine. And 
what they found was that um, if one partner had success, the other partner was three times more likely to lose weight too. So we just can help build each other up. So whether that means you have that one person that you have regular check-ins, like an accountability buddy, somebody that you go to the gym with, or it's just telling your family, hey, I'm I'm on this um, Viome program and that means I need to, you know, eat less sugar, eat whole foods, and I need to avoid a couple of these foods. Um, just having that support is going to give you so much more success on your path to wellness. All right, so um, I mentioned supplements before, um, pre and probiotics being really helpful to support your gut microbiome, but there are also um, minerals, herbs, um, amino acids that can help support your stress response that you can take. You may already see them in your precision supplements. Um, some of these ingredients you can find in tea, um, which is nice. You don't have to take, take it as a supplement um, magnesium being the first one, that's a mineral. Um, it's involved in a lot of pathways that are involved in the stress response. So when we're really stressed out, it's it becomes depleted in our bodies. Um, not to mention magnesium deficiencies are becoming more and more common. So the magnesium, it helps um, activate the parasympathetic nervous system. That's the rest and digest part of the nervous system. So it helps us relax. Um, if you take it before bed, it can help support better sleep. And then rhodiola and ashwagandha, those are adaptogenic herbs, which means they support your body's ability to respond to stress. Whether that stress is physical, chemical, emotional, um, it's going to help promote a state of balance. I know those two in particular, rhodiola, ashwagandha, lemon balm, lavender, all are really good in tea. Uh, so lemon balm is in the mint family, tastes pretty good. Um, it's It works to relieve our stress by increasing GABA levels in the brain. <clears throat> it actually um, inhibits the, the enzyme that breaks down GABA. So GABA being this, um, it's a neurotransmitter, a signaling molecule. It helps um, reduce the excited state of the nervous system. So it kind of helps bring us down a notch. Um, and then lastly, lavender, which is shown in the picture here. It's such a beautiful uh, flowering plant. Um, you can um, get the benefits of reduced stress just by smelling it. So if you have, um, you know, essential oils or maybe even like a lavender lotion, anything that gives you that aroma of it, it's going to help relieve some stress. Um, or you can take it as a supplement. Um, it also works by... Um, working on the parasympathetic nervous system, rest and digest, and it lowers our adrenaline levels. So those, if we're stressed out, we're, we're feeling the adrenaline. So those are all supplements that can help you with this holiday stress and support better sleep. So we want to share with you some of our favorite strategies, aside from the routine, for helping you stay healthy over the holidays. All right, I'll jump in here. Um, I mentioned it before, but getting sick, I think is just one of, for me, it's one of the biggest challenges of the holiday and with sticking with my routines. Um, there's definitely some reasons that we're more prone to being sick during this time of the year. Um, we've talked about lack of sleep, right? That lowers our immune system. Um, there's usually more of a cold, dry air or the heating systems are also giving us that kind of dry air when we're inside. And that can dry out our mucous membranes and make us uh, more prone to uh, like respiratory illness and infections and things like that. Um, lack of sunlight, staying inside more, we're not getting as much of that vitamin D that helps boost our immunity. And then we're just around more people, right? We're being exposed to more germs and um, viruses and things like that that are going around this time of the year. Um, so for me, this has just been like a huge goal. Um, I shared, I think I talked about it a little bit earlier with Hillary, um, but I've gone about a year and a half without any, I have to knock on wood now because now I'm sharing it. I used to not tell anyone. Uh, without a cold or flu or anything like that. 
Um, and it really started as a goal last fall. I said, you know, I, I have three kids and we have a pretty big extended family. My sister has five kids. When we're all together, you know, there's just, that's how it is. There's kids and there's illness and someone's got the flu and someone's got a cold and you're trying not to get it. And um, it seems like we had a number of years where someone was sick and it would pass through the crowd. Um, and last fall, I was like, we are not doing this anymore. I, I'd already been working on, on my immune system. And I said, we're going to do this for the kids too um, and get everyone ready. And we had a, a holiday season last year with no illness. It was so wonderful. It was easier for me to stick to my routines and, and um, you know, the kids enjoy the holidays, obviously, a lot more when they're not laying in bed and missing out on, on all the activities. So this is kind of my, like, number one strategy for surviving the holidays and, and thriving during them um, is keeping your immune system up. So I've listed some foods and some supplements that are my go-tos during this time of the year. Um, citrus fruits are, of course, going to be a huge one. They're usually in season. You can find oranges pretty easily right now, um, but they're going to give you that vitamin C boost um, to help fight any infections. Um, green tea is a nice option too. The EGCG in it actually has some antiviral properties, so um, that's good. But if you prefer an herbal tea, you know, Hillary mentioned some of the supplements uh, she uses for stress. You can also get in herbal teas. Um, the lemon balm is on here. So if you know that stress is your trigger and you're also working on immunity, lemon balm tea is going to be the way to go. Um, it, it's got some antiviral properties there. You can take your echinacea in a tea. Um, hibiscus tea has a bunch of vitamin C in it. So that's a great way to boost that up. And you get a sip on something warm, which is really nice during the holidays. Um, and I like elderberry as well. Um, elderberry actually has been shown to reduce the duration and severity of colds. Um, so that's a nice one to, to make sure you're, you're taking during the holiday season. Um, I also throw in there fermented foods. Hillary mentioned taking your probiotics. That's another way to get that in. But adding fermented foods on top of that is really wonderful. So I've got some sauerkraut in my fridge and I always, I always have some yogurt in there um, that adds diversity to the microbiome and it um, helps, you know, our, those probiotics have help our immune response. So it's nice to have those. And then things like um, garlic and turmeric, when you're cooking, these can be really nice flavors this time of the year. Even turmeric, you can throw in your vegetables or on chicken, things like that. Um, they have antimicrobial properties and that sulfur compound in garlic um, actually helps boost the immune system as well. So those are really good ones. On the supplement side, it's kind of similar. Uh, for me personally, I do like to boost up my vitamin D during the winter time. So I take a little bit more during, especially during the holidays, um, kind of double up my dose there. That, that may be an individual thing depending on what you're taking now or if you're taking any, um, but vitamin D is great for the immune system. Uh, vitamin C as well. I would say the trick with vitamin C though is, uh, at least what studies have shown is you kind of have to be taking it before you get sick to really get the benefits of it. So either boosting up your foods or taking it, you know, there's vitamin C drinks, there's all sorts of things out there right now, um, or just vitamin C supplements, you can start boosting it ahead of time to try to um, get the benefits if you are exposed to something like the cold or flu. Uh, zinc, echinacea, um, echinacea is kind of on repeat for me during the holidays, same with elderberry. Um, and then of course, probiotics are pretty much a staple uh, for me and my family any time of the year. So these are these are at least my kind of go-tos when it comes to the holiday and, and surviving, especially as a family with little kids. But Hillary, jump in here. Oh, yes. Um, intermittent fasting is another tool you can put in your toolbox to get you through the holidays um, or just all, all year. Um, the idea with intermittent fasting, if you're not familiar with it, is that you are um, having periods of eating and then periods of not eating. Um, so I would recommend um, 
having at least a 12 hour window of eating and not eating. Um, what's really key is especially not eating before bed. Um, so I would recommend at least two hours before bed that you don't eat. And the reason for that is there's been studies on this where they've looked at people who eat right before bed and you might have experienced this too. They noticed that the next day they had increased hunger. And it turns out that's because eating before bed decreases leptin. So leptin is this hormone in our bodies that helps make you feel full. Um, so see if you can restrict eating before bed. Our metabolism is just is closely linked to our circadian rhythms, and that's why um, we're feeling more hungry the next day because our, our bodies aren't effectively processing the food we eat right before bed. Um, and then this can be a good tool to help you counteract some of the effects of overindulging. You know, if you had a, a big um, holiday meal, try just, you know, cutting back on your food, restricting your calories later in the day. Of course, this isn't going to completely counteract the effects, um, but it is, like I said, just another tool in your toolbox. Um, there's been plenty of people who intermittent fast that have reported that intermittent fasting makes them feel more mental clarity. They have more energy. Those are all things that we could all use more of, I'm sure. And if this is something you haven't been doing, be compassionate with yourself, ease into it. Um, you know, the most common time schedule is to do eight hours of eating, 16 hours of fasting. If you've never intermittent fasted before, that's probably going to be a lot for you. So try just um, restricting your eating right before bed, and then maybe you increase um, your fasting window over time. Now, this is surely not for everyone. Um, you should check with your doctor first if you have any chronic health conditions, especially um, low blood sugar, if you're pregnant, you're underweight, if you have a history of eating disorders, fasting may not be right for you. Um, but if you're perfectly healthy, go ahead and give it a shot. What do you have to lose? It can be really helpful during the holidays. Awesome. Okay. Hydration. So the importance of staying hydrated can't be overemphasized. Um, water is so essential for so many different processes in your body. Um, it helps flush out toxins, um, helps with normal blood pressure, um, transport nutrients and oxygen throughout your body. It's important for your skin. Um, but, you know, unfortunately, a lot of us aren't getting enough. I know that when I was um, counseling and one of the questions I would always ask is how much water are you drinking and the most common answer is always not enough you know and then come the colder days um, during the winter months um, we don't you know just because we don't drink as much just by habit you know we're, we're not sweating as much so we're generally not drinking a lot uh, but not drinking enough can lead to you know headaches um, dizziness um, irregular bowel movements um, and, you know, dull skin. I know that when I dehydrate, I see it in my skin very first, like on my face. Um, so making sure that you're drinking um, a lot of water um, throughout the holidays or the season is really important. Just because, like I think Hillary said earlier, a lot of the foods that we consume are higher in fat um, and salt and sugar, which can also make um, us a little bit more um, dehydrated as well too. So we just want to make sure we're drinking enough. If plain water isn't your thing, there's some ways that we can, you know, try to, um, up our water intake. Um, you can eat your water. Um, we can get up to about like 20% of our hydration from our foods, like celery, cucumber, um, tomatoes, if you can have it, strawberries, those are all good, um, ways to kind of get some, a little bit more hydration. Um, you can make spa water, um, so like infuse some of your water with different fruits, um, cucumbers, lemons, um, strawberries, cherries are another fun one. Um, you can also steep some different herbs like in mint and then um, add that to your water as well for some flavoring. Um, or you can do some, you know, if you like if sparkling water, that's another option as well too. 
Um, but it's also important. There's also just some cues that we can do, like, you know, um, carrying a water bottle with you makes a really big difference. Um, just because, you know, like we were saying, how our environment impacts us. If we see it right there, we're more likely to go and drink some water. And oddly enough, sometimes even the water bottles where you can open with one hand <laughs> versus like two makes a really big difference as well, too. Um, so just carrying your water with you, um, you know, getting a fun, reusable water bottle, it makes a really big um, impact as well too yeah. and then you know you commonly hear that thirst is often confused for hunger um, sometimes that's because um, those cues just it's a very subtle you know um, I guess cue so if you're not if you're really dehydrated you'll know that you're dehydrated but if you're slightly thirsty you might you know or like or you might go and grab a, something to eat versus like drink some water that can make a big difference as well too so uh, make sure you're you're staying well hydrated uh, throughout the season. Yeah, I know, Gabrielle. I've gone all the way to a straw because even just the effort of flipping something up, I drink more if it's with a straw. Yeah, that's so yeah. true. <laughs> yeah. I yeah. lost my water bottle with a straw this uh, summer to the ocean, and now I have a screw top one, and I totally don't drink enough. So yes, yeah. I think I might switch to the straw too. Good idea. Yeah. Okay, so next tool in your toolbox, make use of automation. I think it's like 50% of the world has access to a smartphone and there's so many um, tools that we can use on there to help with our success. Now, one of the big things with our phones is it's very distracting. Um, we wanna look at it all the time. Um, you know, we're sitting in front of it while we're eating. Um, so you can use apps on your phone to make sure you're setting time limits. Um, you're, you can turn off any unnecessary notifications. Um, just make sure that you're present during these beautiful holiday times. Um, you can hide or delete apps that suck up your time. Um, change your auto lock settings so that it kind of shuts off right away. Um, be present and especially during um, bedtime, this is a good time to set it away, get into your nighttime routine, get into your mindset so that you can fall asleep really well. Um, there is research that shows the blue lights from our phones can affect our sleep. So give yourself some time before bed. I would say at least an hour if you can, the longer the better. Um, that's going to help you sleep better, um, feel better the next day, and make better choices. Uh, okay, we've got to talk about sweets, right? Yeah. <laughs> that's like the hardest thing during the holidays. Um, okay, we'll, we'll jump in here, maybe all of us, and talk a little bit about how we handle sweets. I, I for me, it's always about being super selective. So um, this is something that, it, honestly, it's taken me a number of years to work on and be aware of. Um, but I mentally know um, which treats I really like and which ones are just like, eh. I mean, I know like cheesecake tastes good. I get that. But it's not my favorite thing, right? So being able to kind of take that mental inventory and say, like, what do I really love? And allow myself to have that on occasion, but saying no to the things that like, I never feel good when I eat a donut. I don't know, I just don't. And those are, have become really easy for me to say no to, or like, I know that I love chocolate, especially like a good, rich, dark chocolate. And mm -hmm. I'm, all, I'm pretty much to the point where if it's a dessert that doesn't include chocolate, it's, I just can say no to it. I'm not gonna have the vanilla cake or the apple pie. Like it, the thing I want is chocolate, right? So. Um, getting to know yourself and really identifying and making those mental notes of what are the things that I love and what are the things that I'm okay saying no to. I think this helps a lot too with parties. If you have, you know, three parties in a week um, and you can, you can say, I know that like my best friend is making, you know, whatever, this dessert that I love at this party, I'm going to save it up for that. And at the other parties, I'll make sure I eat before I go, you know, I'll, I'll, or I'll just have like some of the cheese or things like that. Um, just kind of deciding ahead of time can make a big, big difference in how you choose those. I'll kind of jump in. We'll, we'll go through some more hacks for sweets. 
Those are all good ideas, Janelle. Um, one of my hacks is to buy unsweetened options if you can. I think yogurt is a good example, or if you're doing plant-based milks, opt for the unsweetened options and you can add in your own sweetener. Um, and then see if over time you can decrease the amount um, so that you're kind of adjusting your taste buds to a lesser sweetened food. Um, you might, as you're adding sweetness, you might try some um, natural low calorie sweeteners. Um, we know xylitol has some good benefits for your oral health. Allulose is um, a new kid on the block. Janelle might have more info on that. Um, and stevia is our old friend. You only need, stevia is so sweet. You only need like a drop or two um, and you're, you know, it's plenty sweet enough. Um, yeah, I feel like stevia is like the gr a really great option if you're like trying to like sweeten a tea or something like that, where you just need like that little, that little bit. Um, I have been playing around with allulose a little bit more. I, t I told you guys I love chocolate. And that is just the truth. Um, but I don't want to drink like a cup of sugar having a hot cocoa in the winter. And I don't want that for my kids either. Um, so allulose has been a good option for, for me. You can, it's about 70% the sweetness of regular sugar and about one tenth of the calories. Um, so you can pretty much use it one to one. It browns. If you're baking with it, it does kind of brown quickly. Um, I think we have a recipe at the end, um, that we'll share with you guys that uses it in a cranberry sauce. So it does well in like a gel setting. Um, and then, yeah, I think xylitol and stevia are really great when you're just needing like a little bit to like sweeten a beverage or, or something small. And Linda just chimed in. She says cardamom and licorice also make things sweeter. Um, you can also add other flavors, peppermint, cinnamon, vanilla, mm -hmm. pumpkin spice we have there. Um, and she also asked, what about monk fruit? So um, monk fruit is another natural low calorie sweetener. The one thing you need to look out for is it's often mixed with erythritol, which is a sugar alcohol that uh, pre preliminary research indicates that it may not be good for our health. So see if you can find uh, erythritol free monk fruit, if that's what you're. Um, and yes, yes, stevia is often combined with erythritol too. So again, look for erythritol free options of those natural uh, sweeteners. Yeah, and I think our last point here is focus on desserts with whole foods, right? And anytime we can make something ourselves and know the ingredients that are in it and feel confident in those, especially if you're using like fresh fruits, you know, you're using the apples, the pears, things like that in this season. And maybe it has a little bit of sugar added to it. Um, I found out with a lot of recipes, you can just cut the sugar in half and it still tastes great, especially if you have that, that fruit element. Um, but focus on, focus on desserts that you know what ingredients went into it. All right, mocktails. Yes, mocktails. <laughs> mocktails also often called zero proof um drinks they're a fun way whether you're trying to you know reduce your alcohol intake or make some you know age-friendly drinks for the whole family um they're a you know a good way to add some festivity um to during the holidays um so generally i like to use some kind of base um that's like a sparkling like salts or water um, or unsweetened tea or like 100% fruit juice and just dilute it. Um, and then you can just add different fruits to it, different flavors. And then I also let you can blend it if that, you know, make a little, um, I guess, slurpy <laughs> type of drink. Um, and then or, you know, add the frozen fruit um, within it. And they're just um, a lot of fun. They're also a good way to increase some of your hydration as well, too. And I think we have a few recipes um, for you as well. I love that idea, Gabby. I know I've almost entirely quit drinking just maybe special occasions, champagne toast or something. And I found in that journey, it's like, all I really wanted was just like a a fancy drink, right? Um, so I love making mocktails. It helps me feel kind of um, part of the the festivities. So yeah, we like to do like friends, you know, giving friends gatherings and doing like mock different mocktails. You know, it doesn't always have to be 
um, alcoholic beverages. You know, you can be creative um, without it. And they're off, you know, if you're trying to yeah, like up your hydration, watch your weight, lower your sugar and things like that. Um, they're a good alternative. So. Absolutely. It's alcohol is one of the hardest things for people to stop, but we do know a lot about the health um, ben, or the health concerns with it. It's you know not great for our microbiome and for our longevity. So um, if you can try these mocktails, um, it's going to be a benefit for you or, or at least just moderation like Janelle mentioned maybe it's that one glass of really great red wine or you know whatever your favorite drink is see if you can at least moderate it if um, no alcohol isn't an option for you all right we're up to me we like did the mocktails and and I have to say just like decreasing the alcohol has been a good thing in my life as well. I just noticed as I've gotten a little bit older, the decreasing, you know, benefits, uh, benefits, if you want to say of alcohol, you like, you have one drink and two drinks and it's good. And then the next time you have two drinks, it's eh, not so good, you know? So, you know, the, the benefits aren't as good anymore. I feel as I've gotten older. So it's definitely a good thing to decrease as, as you are more mindful of these things. And I think the mocktails are a great, great way to go. So, um, all right. So now we're up to me and I'm talking about regeneration and taking these, as we said in the beginning, taking these 15 minutes for yourself, for a daily ritual, for uh, restoration. As we all know that, you know, uh, stress is real during the holidays. There is no doubt about it. There is joy everywhere. You see it on the TV, you see it in movies, and you see it with parties and things like that. But uh, lots of things go on. Some are super fun and some are not fun, right, during the holidays. And it kind of rolls in starting about November 1st, and it speeds up and it doesn't stop until January 2nd. But... And sometimes it doesn't start until January 2nd, but it doesn't mean that you can't take 15 minutes to pause for yourself every day or maybe every other day, right? And in fact, it can be a necessary thing to do that you do daily to keep yourself healthy. So I do want to talk about something that is scientific, but uh, I am in the marketing department, so I'm going to speak about it in very layman's terms. So if any of my presenters wish to chime in to help me, uh, they are more than welcome. But I'm just going to speak in very, very simple terms. So down regulation. This is a biological process of gently shifting your body over from the sympathetic nervous system. That's the part of your nervous system that responds with the classic fight or flight reactions to the parasympathetic nervous, nervous system. And you heard Hillary talk about that earlier. This is the part of your nervous system that takes over usually during sleep and kicks in with the rest and digest functions, right? And so during times when the amounts of stress when you're experiencing is higher, and of course the holidays is one of those times, that fight or flight mode may be turned on more than usual. And this means that stress hormones are released, heart rate and blood pressure goes up, you become alert and ready to deal with whatever the situations or challenges that you're facing, but you're stressed out, right? <laughs> so when stress is consistently higher over time, you're constantly in this mode, this can lead to health risks. That's where down regulation comes in. Your parasympathetic state calms down these fight or flight functions, these stress hormones, and allows attention to go to less critical activities like digestion, right? And thankfully, there are some very simple techniques that you can use to do this. Um, I think I need to go to the next slide. Yes. So, uh, uh, I'm keeping it and here in the webinar. I'm keeping it super simple because we've already talked about, you know, not feeling like you have to learn and adapt new habits for the holidays. We don't want you to go out and try to figure all these new things for you to do. We want you to keep in what's good for you, what you what works for you, right? Um, but you are probably familiar with and can easily do most, if not all, of these practices. And so that is things like deep breathing muscle relaxation, journaling, stretching or yoga, uh, listening to relaxing music. And I'll throw in a leisurely walk while breathing deeply and listening to relaxing music because there you go. <laughs> and then you also have time to yourself 
maybe outdoors if weather permits, right? And so the important part is to take time for yourself and to give your body and your mind a break to downshift into that PNS, that parasympathetic nervous system. And uh, now, even though I'm not going too deeply into techniques here, I just so happen to have a gift for everyone here today that I'm going to load up for you to access. And that is this. All right, so this is a PDF of your ultimate holiday survival mini guide. And somebody asked earlier, are you going to send out these slides? Well, this is even better than the slides. This, I believe, is it's more than 20 pages. So it, it contains notes from our webinar today, but it also contains um, recipes uh, that we went over. So it contains Janelle's uh, no sugar added um, cocoa. It also contains all three of the mocktails that um, Gabby talked about. Um, it contains, uh, I think an apple cr a cranberry crisp and then a, a, a cranberry, um, a cranberry relish with the allulose that um, Janelle talked about. So there's that. And then also I go into uh, a, a more uh, depth and detail on these uh, these down regulation techniques. Um, and there's um, specific things for, for each of the techniques. Uh, and um, so in this holiday mini survival guide, you have those techniques. Um, and also the full progressive muscle relaxation routine up and down your body is amazing. I highly recommend it. And also, if you have not heard of binaural beats before, this is a new type of audio therapy that can potentially help reduce stress and also help improve sleep. Binaural beats deliver a slightly different frequency tones to the left and the right ear, so you listen to them with headphones on, but the brain perceives them as a single tone. It's pretty cool. Um, so if you're, if you're not familiar with this, um, it can be delivered as just tones or it can be delivered within music. So sometimes if you go to the spa and you hear that very relaxing, easy music, some of um, uh, the music can sound like that in these binaural beats. So your mini guide has links to four different Spotify playlists. So you're ready to go with some relaxing music, including two different binaural beats playlists a classical playlist, so nice, relaxing classical music, and then a Zen relaxation playlist so you can, so you can make believe you're at the spa. So I've done the work for you. You have playlists ready to go for that. And then as, as I said before, your mini guide also has those recipes. And then also you have tips and tricks in there as well um, from each of the, the uh, parts that um, Janelle and Hillary and Gabby gave to you today. So there you go. And, but that's not all. I'm sounding like an infomercial, but I love giving things away to it. Um, uh, so you do have your gift and if you have not downloaded it, just go ahead and download it. It's a PDF, it's a safe download for you. Um, and then one more thing, as we do uh, round out this webinar today, I want to give you a special offer. I'm going to give you a link, um, which is you can visit biome.com and use the code NOVWEBINAR and check out to get $100 off of a full body intelligence test. And you can use uh, that link today and that should plop you onto the Biome website and the code should automatically put in your cart. You can use that today. That's good to prove. Through Sunday, I'd like to do that uh, and check in with the class. And that is our presentation for today. You have your survival mini guide. You have the presentation from my lovely panelists here. I want to thank Janelle and Hillary and Gabby for giving their knowledge and expertise to everybody here. And I also want to thank. Um, all, all of you for joining us for the last hour and spending this time with us so that we could chat about the holidays and get you off on the right foot. And we hope that your holidays are healthy and joyous. Jenny, the code is NOVWEBINAR. And if you click on that link, it'll be in that link right there. All right. If there's no other questions, have a wonderful rest of your day. Thank you so much for joining us here. Yeah. Thank you. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Wishing yeah. you the best. Wishing you the absolute best. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.